Freestyle Travel. That's the name of the show. I'm your host, Kenny Flannery, as always, and my guest today is Tice Sniffin. And I met him through a mutual friend. Uh, they were both working on uh, Trust Roots, which is the hospitality network site, uh, similar to couch surfing, but better. And turns out he makes bags, travel bags, and I've been making my bivy pack for years, so my friend put us in touch, and I finally got to meet him uh, close to Santa Cruz, San Jose kind of area, so that's my guest today, and we talk a lot about bags, travel bags, uh, his bag uh, you can get on ideamountain.com, and he actually gave me a discount code, which is pretty cool. So if anyone uh, listening, watching this is into it, they can uh, pick it up for, I think, 15% off using the code Freestyle Travel. Uh, that's super cool. It's the first on the, uh, the show, getting people a discount on something like that. Super cool. So yeah, we talk about yeah bags and hospitality networks and travel philosophy. And uh, yeah, speaking of, of bags, uh, my bivy pack, I'm re-energized, especially after talking to him. So I'm making a new prototype. So actually anyone listening to this uh, who wants to get in touch very quickly, <laughs> uh, I'm actively designing it right now. I've got like swaths of material. If you're watching, you can kind of see some of this stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's all I'm doing for the next few days is just hammering out a final design for the next prototype that I will be traveling with. And if you want one, I'm going to make uh, perhaps uh, an extra two to four um, for other people. So if you want to get on board kind of blind, uh, it's going to cost 350 bucks. If you look up on YouTube, uh, Hobo Lifestyle Pandemic Pack, that's the last backpack that I made just for myself. Uh, it's going to be similar to that. So super cool. Kind of like the bivy pack design, but perhaps a bit more modular, uh, a little bit smaller in volume. Um, going to use this ultra fabric for the body of the pack, which is just like bomber waterproof, just top of the line ultra light right now. Um, yeah, it's going to be a jacket included that turns into the fly of the bivy. Uh, yeah, if you watch the Hobo Lifestyle Pandemic Pack video, just Google that. It should turn up. If you like what you see there, uh, roll the dice. <laughs> and I'm going to make, yeah, like I said, I'm only going to make a few because I don't want to be stuck making packs, but I will gladly make a few. So get in touch with me. What's the best way? Just uh, hobo lifestyle at gmail.com or yeah, through any of the social media stuff that I got, Hobo Lifestyle, Freestyle Travel. Uh, get in touch with me quickly, <laughs> pretty much as soon as you're listening to this, and I intend to deliver those packs before Thanksgiving, maybe a lot sooner, but I'm just saying that to cover my ass. But uh, I'm really excited because it's been a couple years since I made that pandemic pack, and I absolutely love it. it uh, yeah, I've traveled with that for maybe longer than any of the other packs, and yeah, just making some uh, some improvements that I'm really stoked about. So if you want to get on board with that, just send me a message and we'll do it through a Cash App or Venmo or something. But uh, yeah, so we got Tice coming up and also I'll catch you up on my uh, travels since the last episode where I was in Reno talking to uh, Zane Lamprey, which was an awesome episode. If you like drinking and travel, you got to listen to that one. But since Reno, yeah, I've... Uh, Come on over into California. I got as far up as Oregon. A lot of coastal hitchhiking, some beer drinking, meeting Tice, who you're about to meet, um, and getting to where I'm at now in Nevada as of yesterday. Hitchhiked here, um, cut through Bakersfield and a bunch of it. So I'll tell you all about that. But let's uh, let's meet Tice and talk about backpacks and travel. All right, we're recording. Wow. <laughs> cool. <laughs> So thanks again for having me at the property, doing the podcast. Yeah, man. It's super cool to meet somebody as amazingly well-traveled as you. Yeah, and yourself as well. Uh. <laughs> Making the backpacks. Yeah. So we didn't really discuss what we were going to talk about, but the backpack is definitely... That's the thing I want to promote, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So tell me, like, that's how we met through uh, our friend Casper. Because you were making these backpacks, and he knows I make the bivy pack and all that. Yep. Connected us. And that was cool. I sent you a message, and you're like, I've seen you before. <laughs> totally, totally. I, I think we figured out it was from Kickstarter, but somehow or another, I, by Googling ultralight packs or packs and tents, I used to be, be 
uh, have fantasies about making tents too. So somehow you were, you were accomplishing what I had been thinking about years ago. Yeah. And so then, yeah, I knew what you, I knew immediately who you were and all that stuff. And then to catch up with you and see that you've done this new models and things like that. And you're, and then I did, of course, didn't know about the fact that you were just living out of the thing. for years, so. <laughs> Yep. That was the whole impetus of it. Yeah. Super <laughs> but, cool. And, uh, so when did you first make this travel bag that you got? So I, um, I started the idea of having a company in late, late, late to 2018. And I had always had this idea, uh, 20 years, I, I've got notes from 20 years ago where I was like, it'd be cool if bags kind of work together and somehow, and so this idea of modularity for travel bag was a thing that I've been kicking around for a long time. Um, and for one bag travel is to use the, the typical terms right. we see on Reddit and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, the one bag um, Reddit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, um, so at 2018, I was like, I got to do something with my life in the second half of my life or whatever you'd call it. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe I could start this company. It'd be cool. And I had this idea and I actually ended up getting it patented. So that was also kind of a vanity project where I spent a bunch yeah. of money with lawyers <laughs> and they were good lawyers and all that. But the, a patent on this situation is not really that helpful. Yeah, I never went through with one either because yeah. I looked and it looked like it was going to be a couple grand to kind of do it the right way. I probably spent close to 10 grand. Wow. Yeah. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, if someone comes at me, like whether I need to protect the patent or they try to claim that they started it first, that's when like lawyers get involved and that's when tens of thousands of dollars are going to vault. Yeah. And I'm, I'm no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to care enough. So I yeah. might as well not burn the yeah. two grand. Yep. And patents don't work internationally unless you pay, pay another 10, 15, $20,000. <laughs> so somebody in China could make your, a rip off of your thing and you could not really do much about it. Wow. You could stop Amazon from selling it. You could show up and be like, Hey, I've got a patent on this and they're just stealing it. Yeah. But you know, even that's a pain, <laughs> but still it was a bit of vanity thing. I want, yeah. I love the idea of having a patent of my name. Yeah. <laughs> and there is some aspect of, you know, it, it's a level of uniqueness. Like I patented this, this is a new thing. Yeah. It's me. I did it. And I, it's a selling point a little bit too, I hope. Yeah. So, yeah, it is so, a nice yeah. word to see. So I, I did that in 2019 and started the process and then um, was chasing down manufacturing relationships, got a great trip to Vietnam, which we've discussed already, and, um, uh, and, and found a fabulous manufacturer in what I call the Detroit of backpacks. Uh, like huh. Vietnam is where you go if you're going to make a backpack. Like Patagonia is there, North Face. The big ones, the small ones, the unique ones, yeah. the cheap ones, and the super high-end ones, all are made in Vietnam. So they're just outfitted to be perfect. They got fabrics there already. Supply chains, um, everything. Yep. Fa uh, even, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a culture of sewing, like every household has a sewing machine in it. Oh, cool. It's kind of a standard thing. I mean, it can't speak about a whole culture, of course, but yeah, or generalized, but and it's not like sweatshop vibes, no, like no, eight year olds. No. Like, You're right, right. Yeah. And that's why I went to all those factories to visit them and make sure there was none of that kind of stuff going on. Right. I wanted to be, you know, up and up on all that. Yeah. And so then in that process and deciding to chase down the best of the best. So I got the best fabrics I could, the best, uh, you know, uh, hardware, zippers yeah. and buttons and everything's always like, you know, when you're doing a project like this, it was, you, I know your passion is about the, the lightness and the, you know, half a gram here, half a gram there. Right. And for manufacturers, like really looking to sell what I hope would be a, a, a couple thousand a year or something, you, you get down to like, well, the zi this zipper is 79 cents a yard and this zipper is 59 cents a yard. Well, let's right. use the cheaper one. Yeah. And like, I was like, I'm not going to make decisions based on 20 cents yeah i want the best one like i just yeah. want the one that the customer is always going to be happy with yeah and i like that about what you're doing because i was the same way i was like whatever the best fabrics are whatever the best way is like and you know my purpose was being light as well yeah. but i wanted just the best and whatever ends up costing is what it'll cost and, right right and, and it's not it. that much difference like yeah the, sh the the people doing that cheaper 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 shaving off yeah it's not like it, you shave off 10 cents off the whole thing like what yeah. are you <laughs> just yeah. get the good stuff yeah and uh and go with the good manufacturer that treats his people well and stuff like that so that's what i did and so i was already 
committed to manufacturing. I had put the money down and I was going to do it. And then I additionally, I was like, launch the Kickstarter so that I could ideally get the word out globally, get a bunch of money or orders right up front. And uh, I know you've done Kickstarters and had success. Yeah. And I struggled. Yeah, but I, we got over the finish line. It yeah. Was an, a nail biter. They're rough, man. Yeah. I think I've done four or five Kickstarters for various oh. projects, two for the backpack and Actually, I did one for this podcast, oh, which was funny because well, I think... thanks, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, the funny thing was I was trying to raise like 300 bucks or something. Oh. Like, it wasn't much. Yeah. And then one of my friends was, was like 500 yeah. <laughs> in like two days. And I was like, all right, well, I guess the Kickstarter is over. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the, all the other ones, it was just like day 27 of 30. And I'm like, there's no way we're going to hit the goal. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. right it's at the finish event. line. Yeah. And of course, that's all become its own micro business and everybody's hitting you up for money yeah. but it was cool like i got orders from dubai that i would never have oh, been yeah. marked you know those people would not have connected with my bag in, a, in another way yeah and um so that launched and then uh, oh and that by the way was at the right at the start of the pandemic okay. i launched my kickstarter may of 2020 oh wow like may 1st <laughs> yeah it's just like ah <laughs> And um, so the pandemic, of course, has been where I've been in the travel business the entirety yeah. of the pandemic. And so struggles and all of that as, as all small businesses, but in addition to that. And then uh, so now here I am. Maybe we're coming out of the pandemic, I hope. And that things yeah, are, for sure. Travel is bouncing back. And so I would I, I'm, I'm hoping to begin to get out there and do some serious marketing again. Yeah. And, meet the customers, get into version two, expand the line. I got a bunch of things in the, in the works, but I don't nice. know if we'll talk about that. So I don't think we should do a full demo just because most people actually listen to this and yeah. watch, but uh, do you want to say like, a couple of things that just make it different than just a normal knapsack? Yes, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so super quick. It is, and for the camera, I'm not holding it up, but it's a it's carry-on size for all typical American airlines or corporate, big corporate airlines. It f meets all the uh, carry-on size. Uh, yeah, this would fit under a seat. You could you could get on like Spirit and Frontier as your personal item and not have to pay. Probably, yep, yep. Yeah. The um, and then the fundamental thing about it is it's modular. It has it, it, we say it's five in one in some of our marketing. But yeah. The fundamental deal is the day pack is a separate. Oh, that's cool. You can do it just like that. Yep. You've gotten good at it. That. Yep. <laughs> Little then, fit locks come off. Yep. And, uh, and so the luggage portion comes right off with a click, a super quick click. And then you can put that luggage portion in the overhead bin or in the trunk of your car or whatever. And then you get your day pack, which is more your daily use stuff right with you, ready to go. And it is a small minimalist day pack that then I have packed full of my typical stuff. Yeah. And then, it is, and it's got all the best features. There's no, I didn't invent anything about a day pack. Though. Yeah. You just did it right. But yeah. it's cool. Cause the straps from the day pack and all this, for those just listening, like they're the same straps that would, that's why you're holding your whole backpack. So. Right. It's not two backpacks. That's yeah. the typical backpacks that come together is like a big backpack that hooks onto a smaller See, backpack. now I'm thinking about, I've seen that North Face where it's yep. like on the back of it and it yep. comes off and it's yep. a separate backpack. But no, this, the strap system from this is what you're using when the right. rest of it's yeah. on there. Yeah. The day pack is the base or the foundation. The luggage yeah. piece connects the on. core. And luggage piece can be carried separately. It's got a grab handle on the top, grab handle on the side. But okay. it's not really designed for that. Like you're not really carrying them separately ever. Yeah. And then in the the luggage pack, we've got the the toiletries kit as well. A little traffic traffic one vehicle a day in the neighborhood. <laughs> so, Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then uh, and there's also a shoe stuff sack that comes with it, and some hand rolled vacuum bags that come with it. Those are kind of like extra gifts. But then the the third piece. The fundamental third piece is the top access pocket of the day pack. Basically inside it has a little fanny pack. Yeah. And so that you never have to chain, move your essentials or whatever you'd carry in a fanny pack and repack when you're going somewhere different. Right. You're ready to go. You always have the same stuff in each pocket already. You're already packed. You're super fast. You don't have to think about it. You got less stress in your life. Yep. But if you're just going on a walk or a hike or going to the beach after dinner and you want to carry, you know, your essentials, 
just take the fanny pack. You don't have to carry, lug around a big yeah, fanny pack. Yeah, especially if your laptop's in there, a bunch of other junk you don't yeah. need to take to the beach. Yeah. You know? Or worse, take your underwear to the beach on <laughs> uh, yeah. the evening walk. Yeah. If you're carrying everything. Yeah. So that's my, my big thing. Modularity, carry only what you need. Make it in a way that the, the customer is going to be as happy as possible. And you got some ideas for 2.0? Anything you can talk about? or? Um, well, with the 2.0 of the Journey system, we call this model the Journey. So oh, yeah. You, tell people what this is all oh, called if they oh, want yeah, to right, right, <laughs> look yeah. it up. And, yeah, you go, yeah good, good luck Googling it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the Journey system by Idea Mountain. My company's name is Idea Mountain. So ideamountain.com yeah. has the Journey system. And uh, so this is the Journey. If When we do Journey system 2.0 or... This, yeah, we'll probably call it that, version two. Um, it won't be much different, except that um, the day pack is gonna be a little wider. Because yeah. right now, oh, an additional thing with the day pack, which I don't have with this one right now, is there's a removable laptop sleeve. Yeah. And that, so that's the fifth item. The toiletries, the luggage, the day pack, the fanny pack, and the la laptop sleeve. And the laptop sleeve comes out, and you, I've got customers who just use that. They like carry huh. that alone to the coffee shop, which I find weird. Like wouldn't what about your water bottle or what? Yeah. But that's them. <laughs> um, but the laptop sleeve really is designed for a traveler laptop. Yeah. So a 13 inch. Yeah. And Which I think is perfect. I, of course. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're a smart traveler. <laughs> yeah. But um, a lot, a lot, a lot of people have a 15 inch laptop. Yeah. And they want that. And so even though that was a big debate with version one, with version two, we'll probably go with the 15 inch laptop capability. Gotcha. Um, and then I've got some other product ideas in the, in the works, which are long and complicated. We don't need to talk about that. Yeah. 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 So, it sounded cool though. You've told me some of those ideas that yeah, being the core you. of other things. Yeah. Like, but yeah. it's really about, and they, uh, this is something that I'd like to ask you, or maybe, you know, get your podcast folks to hear your perspective on is my, my, my goal <laughs> is to get, make the gear so good for travelers that they actually have a better trip because yeah. of this gear. Right. And and for me, that means like effortless traveling and, and most of travel, when you think about travel, it's it's transitions in transportation. Yep. Like moving from the car to the airport, from the bus station to the train station, to yeah. da, 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 whatever, going from the train station to the youth hostel. Right. And those little transition periods if you're worried about all your crap or is something going to get stolen? Did I forget something? Where's my ticket? Where's my passport? Yep. If you're not organized, you have way more psychic crap in your head and you're yeah. not enjoying those transition. Therefore, you're not enjoying traveling. It's not as good. Yeah. And so for me, uh, that's what I'm going for. I'm trying to create these better travel experiences. Yeah. And I think just getting it as small as you've done by having like the dual use and that sort of thing like that's sort of the biggest one because a lot of people they'll get to a city and the first thing they want to do is like where can i stash my bag like yeah. i never want to be one of those guys who uses a luggage locker really you know, like stashing your bag at the train station uh, no because okay. if your bag is small enough and i think this counts yeah, like yeah, yeah. then you can just start moving yep. and you don't have to go back to the train station because what if you're like a couple miles away you're at a cafe and there's a bunch of people they're like we're going to this party you want to hop in we can give you a ride yep. and it's like 17 miles down the way and like you're and then you're like stressing you're like oh the rest of, i gotta get back to the train station at some point yep, yep. and then a week later your two countries over and you're like oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah nice. Well, you definitely travel more uh, spur of the moment than I do, <laughs> yeah. which is which is cool. But weirdly, like I, one of the aspects of of going with the bag and making sure it was soft sided was yeah. very specifically so you could stuff it into a train locker. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I love the idea of not carrying a bag too. Like that's yeah. I mean, you're what you just laid out is perfectly legit, and why you'd want light stuff so you could hop and move around. Yeah, I wouldn't want to come back to it. Yeah, but um. Yeah, and I don't mind. I think I feel like a bag this small, you can go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like as long as it's not weighing you down, you don't feel too heavy. You can right. put it down. Like so, unless you go to like a club or something, which I yeah. wouldn't be doing. And then <laughs> then you got to be all freaked out because you got it like in the corner there, and you're right, always glancing. Right. Always looking at it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it'll fit between your feet, you know, in a, somebody's car, like no problem. Yeah. Like that kind of thing, you can get a ride. You can jump around, like. You just, yeah, traveling light and small, it obviously gives you more options. Yeah. More sense of, uh, sense of control. Yeah. 
And actually, I used to have a little day pack. I've gone through a bunch of iterations of what I had, but I had one of those like ultra sill ones that you know yep, scrunched sweet. up yeah. to like size of a fist. Yeah. Now I'd use that. And now actually, what I do is uh, ah, it's got bit in the heel. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll actually empty out my bag and use that as my day pack because it like collapses to yeah. almost nothing. Wow. And I'll just put my laptop in there, or I'll just walk around with all my stuff and not yeah. care because it's not like. A crazy amount if i just if i'm staying with someone i want to walk to the coffee shop or around town yeah and i'll do that but that's clearly not as convenient as just clipping off the essentials yeah and yeah. walking away there's definitely like you being the nomad that you are you are your own headquarters all the time yeah right? <laughs> like you you are self-contained unit and when the way i travel and not that your your way is worse than mine or, or my way is better uh, uh but when I'm traveling, I'm almost always going to see friends or going to see people that I'm meeting through these hospitality organizations that we know. And, yeah. And so I'm getting to a destination, and then I want to shed a, a bunch of stuff. Right. So, and plant down at that little two, three day headquarters. Yeah. And yeah, be able to take yeah. off with the and essentials. Even with an Airbnb, sometimes traveling with the family or traveling with other families. Like we go and get the house, and then we go out and explore and do things. Yeah. And so I want to be able to have all my different bag reiteration opportunities yeah easy to go and, and do that transition quick that makes sense especially if you're like going out to dinner you don't want to like come in with the whole <laughs> bag which yeah. i'll just do because yeah, yeah i don't know that's the choice i've left myself with <laughs> but it is nice to before i got into having some of this camera gear and stuff like i joked about eventually getting to the point where i had no bag like is that yeah. possible and still have the capabilities that i have because i also camp and uh, so i need the sleeping bag in the tent which is yeah. the bulky items right. yeah you're carrying your whole house as well yeah you, you, yeah you got it all. <laughs> so it's it's amazing how well you've done with slimming down and, and keeping slim down yeah it seems yeah the camera really stuff has bulked it up a little bit but it's still slimmer than a lot of people's bags when they first start just because yeah. i've got the essentials kind of crystallized into <laughs> yep. what they need to be not too many clothes and yeah you're making and fun of my jeans earlier but <laughs> no, that's probably good looking. They're good looking. yeah but no it, that is the goofy bulky clothing yeah. item that i have yeah. but yeah. i like the trade-off <laughs> right right and <laughs> if in your if you're ever in the colder months you're probably wearing them most of the time anyway and they're not in your bag yeah yeah exactly yeah. so not yeah, even carrying works. them what would you give uh people uh, if for if somebody was going to travel i suppose you get this question all the time if somebody was going to do the nomad thing for a three-month period yeah i suppose besides the buy the bivy pack uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or the uh, journey from idea mountain what yeah. advice would you give them in the biggest picture advice like for packing no i think just in in anything in travel the biggest the biggest thing you have to have to be a nomad for a three-month period is an attitude of or uh keeping your options open kind of i don't know the best way to put it but just like don't get too locked in to anything yeah. because as you're traveling you're going to meet people and things are going to come up that are way cooler than what you were thinking of <laughs> so even if you got like a few things you're like all right i definitely want to get to the top of that mountain i want to go to that brewery for sure yeah museum whatever have those ideas in your head but leave yourself some space for when someone's like there's a festival over here a couple towns over like do you want to go and yeah. like be able to say yes to all that stuff that's yeah. been the great that's why i'm still doing this 15 years later because things come up yeah and i'm not like oh i need to be at work in the morning or i've you know already got this plan yeah most of the time i can say yes to the random idea that somebody's presented yeah that's yeah. better than anything i could have thought of so that's i would just cool. say kind of leave yourself open to yeah. spontaneous travel events say yes <laughs> That's yeah. a really good point. Really yeah. good. <laughs> and I guess I, I, you could figure an easy way to tie that back to the gear talk, right? The, the way you yeah. can say yes is because you're carrying all your stuff. Yeah, right? I'm flexible. Like, I mean, imagine somebody with a full-size rolly bag, hard-sided rolly bag. You're like, you want to go to yeah. the festival? Or just jump in. Oh, well, here, where do I put my bag? Yeah, yeah. So, or you got to go back and get it wherever yeah. you got it stashed or something. It's just not as convenient i do know this girl cherish and she is rollerbaggoddess.com i don't know if oh, she's still wow. keeping
sleeping up my on it. Mortal enemy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and she her logo is like a girl with a roller bag. She hitchhiked with me from uh, actually the couch surfing house that they had in Berkeley, like the frat house. Yeah. Me, her, and uh, Mandy all hitchhiked to Vegas, and <laughs> she had a roller bag going down the highway. Wow. It was ridiculous. Wow. But that's just she just yeah. loves it. Yeah. So women can rule the hitchhiking world. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the roller bag for me, it's a, it'd be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> like it's yeah. more of a problem than that. Like it's good for, I guess, the airport, and that's the only place. Right, and right. even there, like, yeah. not for me. Yeah, you still mm -hmm. have stairs and escalators and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I want to be a guy who travels to a place where a roller bag doesn't make sense. Yeah. That's one. Of, there's a mantra for. for Which me. is basically everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think. Sorry, yeah. cherish. <laughs> but. No, the backpack is just kind of the ultimate thing. Yeah. And I've explored different ideas. I met this girl in New Orleans, and I think I told you she had the travel skirt, she yeah. called it, that she yep. sewed up. Yep. And it basically was a longish skirt, almost a dress with different pockets, and it had suspenders on it. So and you she could weigh it right so, down. So, yeah, you could yeah. weigh it down, and no backpack, and that's yeah. just how she traveled. And that's like, just kind of a circular backpack, hung real Kind of, yeah. <laughs> But it was like a little different take. Yeah. And then yeah. we were talking about the guy who traveled with like nothing, no bag. Yeah. But he, when I read his blogs, there's too many problems having to borrow people's sweatshirts like all the time. Right, right. And there's something to be in it like borrowing people's stuff. Like there's cer certain things that are around all the time. You just don't need to carry. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 There's so, so many people travel with stuff yeah. that is already at your destination. Yeah. I mean, even I was joking before with you about like the shampoo and conditioner. I mean, obviously, this is not a problem I think about a lot. Yeah. But, like, somebody's got that at the other end. Like, don't, 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 yeah. That kind of stuff. And, like, I used to travel with a beard trimmer, and I actually wrote a blog post that surprisingly did, like, really well on SEO and stuff. Yeah. Like, the lightest beard trimmer you could get. Oh, uh, yeah. But eventually, I just realized, like, I don't, I don't know. I trim it whenever it comes up. So now I just have one of those, um, I think it's meant to be like a nose hair trimmer. Super slim. Have you yeah. seen these things? It's like well, the size of a pencil. And then you turn the bottom? Like um, I have one where you turn the bottom and it's just like its own little razor blade. But you hand turn it. Oh, uh, no. It's not like that. You clip it on. It's just like four or five little razor things. And uh, whatever. It's good enough to trim the mustache. And then every like month or two, I'll be staying at someone's place who's got a proper beard trimmer. And I'll be like, all right, time to trim this thing down. Yeah. And in between, I just don't care. And it's not taking up space in my bag. It doesn't have some weird proprietary charger or like I got to replace batteries on yeah. the go. It's just like, you can get rid of stuff like that. Totally. Uh, towel, you showed me that like Kickstarter towel you had. And I used yeah. to have something similar. And I realized almost every time I have access to a shower, somebody's got a towel too. Right. And if they don't, I got a shirt or I can air dry. Yep, yep. And just save weight on stuff yeah. like that. The whole going swimming as we're sitting here by our my swimming hole pond. This thing's pretty I, sweet. <laughs> yeah, every time I um, go swimming, like I'm hot, I'm getting in the water to cool off and getting out of the water wet is part of the cooling off process. Yeah. Like you dry <laughs> off before you're going to your next thing. So you don't need a towel for yeah. swimming. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, showers have towels. Yeah. Right. And whatever, if I need to, I'll use one of my clean shirts yeah. and it'll yeah. dry immediately. Yeah. So there's a lot of things like that that you think you need to like bring, but they're just taking up space. Totally. To offer you like a modicum of convenience that yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. actually need. I used to have a big fantasy about being a travel sports coat guy. Like, huh. you know, and there's a number of people doing that kind of stuff with the high end, you know, throw it in the washing machine, it comes out looking great, kind of uh, sports coat stuff. Oh, okay. Some of them are look good, some of them don't look good in my opinion. But just a standard sports coat, which I travel with most of the time. Most of my friends kind of make fun of me as like <laughs> the overdressed guy at the airport. Yeah. But it's a perfect kind of jacket unless you're going to the tropics. Yeah. Like it's, it looks good and yeah. you do get better service when you're dressed up more. I yeah. swear to God. Oh yeah. And then it's got all the pockets. Okay. So you can keep all this stuff all over the place. Yeah. And then, you know, it keeps you warm, just warm enough. Yeah. And and most well-made sports coats, which you can find at secondhand stores yeah. um, or buy firsthand, like, you can fold them up. It's not any big deal. Like, yeah. they're not, like, precious china. You can fold them up, throw them in the overhead bin, or throw them even in the backpack. Of it. Okay. And, and they're going to do, like, in a minute, they've got... No, the wrinkles are all gone and everything. Oh, okay. That's the so, thing. I thought you're, and I guess you could combine the two, but there's also like the, the TSA jackets or whatever the travel jackets yeah, people make that are yeah. basically in lieu of a backpack. You have this jacket that's just got, you know, there's an iPad pocket. Right, right. 
And you could like almost like the travel skirt. Yep. Have yep. a travel jacket. People do that. Yeah. And, uh, most of those, and I'm I'm just such an old man that I like the sports coat look. And yeah. most of those modern travel jacket things are like hoodies with funky yeah. pockets or something. Yeah, they're it's a little just bit not my look. A no. different style. Yeah. But sometimes I wish I was like I don't know, if I didn't have the camping thing as like a necessary part of like and how I'm traveling. Just walk around. The amount of weight that I would just shed would be yeah crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, and but it would you'd be. lose a lot of that flexibility. Yeah, and the flexibility is key, especially with the hitchhiking. I just don't know where I'm going to end up and. Yeah. And knowing, and that even if I'm in a town and I have a couch surfing host and they flake, and even if I was a millionaire and all of the hotel rooms are booked, it's like, yeah. at all times I know I can find a place and lay down. Yeah. And I'll be dry, bugless. Like, that's always my backup. It's my home and I feel comfy. I get in my bivy and I'm all like, it's where I feel snug, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, yeah. And Super cool. Yeah. Especially because I, I tell people this all the time when I find a place to like stealth camp. I always find places where if I died in the middle of the night, I don't know, I had a heart attack, however people die in their sleep, <laughs> uh, no one would find my body, maybe ever, or at least for weeks. Yeah. That's like how I search for campsites. That's right. where, that's, those are the places I like to camp. <laughs> where will no one find my body? Yeah, right. but that's because of that, when I do find a good spot like that, I feel so snug because I'm like, I'm so hidden from everybody, like, yeah. and I'm in my little sack, my home, yeah. and I just feel at peace and I sleep good. Like, that's awesome. That's yeah. so good for you. Yeah, but yeah, it's not for everybody. Even just a bivy, even for campers, there's people like, like much prefer a hammock or a tent yeah, or. Yeah. But for me, I've gotten used to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and yeah, and, and you get. I think. I mean, you've had years, but I think people. You can get used to camping, in or you know doing whatever in anything. If if you sleep in a hammock for a year, yeah. you'd be pretty comfortable in a hammock. Oh yeah, and at that point, you'll know exactly how to string it up, how yeah. taut, what you like, yeah, and yeah, kind of yeah. dial it in. Yeah. Get used Very to cool. it. But then if you stop doing that, yeah. like it becomes a little less comfortable yeah. <laughs> over time. So another question for you, and, and as a travel expert that you are, what would you say is like the newest, latest thing you've learned about traveling or that something that you've learned that's improved your travel? Um, I'm trying to think, just travel in general, not necessarily packing. Yeah, whichever, I don't know. Is that the yeah. goofy question I just thought of? Uh, I'm trying to think, like, just for me, I mean, Hmm. I'm waiting for the, the sites to get back going, honestly. Like, I know that's like an old thing, like couch surfing and trust routes. Yeah. I'm waiting for those to pick back up. Yeah, so more people are actually interacting. Yeah, because yeah. it kind of feels like that went away. So now that it's starting to get back going again, like it almost feels new again yeah. <laughs> in yeah. a way. It does, like there's a new generation of people discovering it. Yeah, yeah. so I'm kind of curious how that's going to go. Yeah. Get that going. One but. of my, I would just, I'm going to answer my own questions just maybe. And, and, yeah. Uh, also, and it's not a brand new thing that I've learned, but I think I'm applying it more specifically now. And it's also, again, more of an older person's thing, or with, and which means also somebody who's willing to spend more money a little bit. Yeah. And I've decided that I'm always, when I go to a new city, um, and I'm not in new cities as often as you, and, uh, but I, uh, I'm going to probably do a food tour. I'm going to pay for a local guided food tour. Yeah. Um, right when I get there. I, obviously not in my own country, but uh, in when Will I'm you like traveling. start in the morning and make sure you get an awesome breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, full well, day of like... Yeah, yeah, more like you start at 1030 and they, okay. they, yeah, they usually, you know, you hit a bakery or something and then you say work up towards lunch and you do like four lunch spots. Yeah. Some of them include alcohol, some of them don't. Um, huh. And I've always been super satisfied with that. And it feels a little expensive when you're like planning your trip. Yeah. Like, oh, so we're going to Marrakesh, uh, it's, uh, Morocco next month, and we're going to start in Marrakesh. And I'm just, we're going to be there that first day. We're going to be there. I'm like, I'm doing the food tour. And it's yeah. going to be kind of spendy. It's going to be, it's, uh, it's going to be 80 bucks for the family for the, you know, for the three of us to eat for four hours. Yeah. Which is <laughs> like really good, really. Right. Yeah. And if you think about it. But it feels like a lot of money, but yeah. like I've always had a great experience with that. And, yeah. And so that's kind of my new revelation. I should always do that. So something kind of in that same vein that was new for me that, so for the first three, yeah, almost four years of traveling, like I was just, what's the cheapest stuff I can eat? Whatever. I don't care yeah. what it is. Like yeah. that's cheap. Loaf yeah. of bread, whatever. 
Um, and it actually wasn't until I went to Thailand and everything was just naturally cheap. Yeah. And that's the first time I was eating like great local food, whatever I wanted, whatever I saw, I got. Yeah. And after that, I was like, I'm just going to do this all the time, no matter what. So even when I was in France and I think I had like 40 or $50 in my life, <laughs> I was like, I want to get that duck and frog wasp stuff. And it was like 20 or 30 bucks after all is said and done. Yep. And I was down to like 10 bucks in my life, but I'm like, I don't care. Like yeah. I'm here. I want to, I'm here. Yep. I may not be back. And even if I do come back, like that's part of traveling, like totally. seeing the different scenery, eating the different foods. Like, yep. and I'm like, I'm just going to do it no matter what. Cause I've learned us with the whole money thing. Like, things pop up like as I get close to broke something always pops up yeah. some little gig that I can do awesome. and it always happens like yeah. well it helps to have a bunch of talent and, and capability like you but yeah <laughs> yeah luck, and luck favors the bold is maybe a thing they say yeah something and like now that. new things are popping up there's always new projects and like I feel like I've got this kindling now of stuff and I'm just waiting for a spark and like a lot of things might happen in awesome. that regard but yeah I'm just yeah the food thing doesn't matter where I'm at if I'm in Chicago I'm like all right Yep. Let's what take this doing? deep yeah. dish quote pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it pizza, but it's delicious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a giant baked hot dish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna eat it. Yeah. Like I'm here. I'm gonna do it. Yep. Like, yep. So I'll do that for sure. If I go to Japan, even if I'm broke, I'll be like, I wanna find a great sushi spot. Yeah. Like maybe not, you know, not like tablecloth right, right. world class or right. anything. Yeah. But like go down to the docks in Tokyo, yeah. that's where you wanna be for the sushi the sushi. That's the spot. spot. Yeah. <laughs> nice. More like the the typical kind of construction worker eats there at noon kind of, and they have the kind of the conveyor belt kind of kudo kudo it comes and comes it's called. Yeah. And those, you know, like astoundingly good sushi wow. and just for like regular lunch counter prices. Huh. Yeah. Have you seen this like sushi burrito thing? No, no. <laughs> I haven't had one. I've seen it in Cal here in California Oh yeah. and it's basically like, yeah, sushi like, burrito, you can imagine. Yeah, like can a picture. poke bowl wrapped up in a tortilla, <laughs> probably, right? Uh, no, usually wrapped up in seaweed or something, oh, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. Seaweed, <laughs> so yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, that is the one cool thing about uh, the United States. We are the food fusion center, and <laughs> yeah. California seems to be doing a good job of it. There's so, a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. So the other thing I want to talk to you about, obviously, is trust roots and hospex oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. like how you've gotten involved in that and serve us. And, yeah. Yeah. Like, well, just to, I'm sure your regular listeners have heard you talk about it before, but uh, the hospitality organizations, there's a number of them out there. Yeah. And I uh, stumbled upon Servas, which is, uh, we always say, the grandfather of all of them, yeah. um, which was founded in 1948 in Denmark by this guy who wanted to set up hosts and travelers. Most of us are all familiar with Couchsurfing now, Couchsurfing.com, yeah. which has had its rise and falls. Uh, and um, but yeah, Servas was the paper and pencil version of Couchsurfing.com, where you, yeah. you'd see a list of hosts, you'd write them a letter, "Can I stay with you?" All that. Servas has a particular thing where you actually have to go through an interview process to become a member. So they kind of check you out, make sure you're not sketchy, make yeah. sure you understand how to be a good guest, and then. And that's how they do that. So they send a physical person yeah, to uh, you. Yeah. Well, it depends on your region and the country. Uh, they either, somebody comes and checks out your place if you're going to be a host. Yeah. Or uh, you go to their house and to, for an, a traveler interview or something like that. Or mm. meet at a cafe. And yeah. of course, they're doing Zoom interviews now. and doing. But there's a little bit of check and there's a little bit of uh, letters of reference okay. stuff. So it's definitely more of a of a hassle to join yeah but more yeah. of a vetting yeah. process so yeah. you can almost be a little more confident yeah. like it everybody's is. different so you never know exactly what experience you're going to get but yeah. you know yeah. one of the negatives of that couch surfing when it exploded so hard when the internet was really exploding everywhere too yeah was there was a lot of sketch going on there was a lot of dudes using it as a dating service yeah and and young uh, travelers were not aware that they were getting into this kind of sketchy situation yeah so there was there's a reason why you should be careful with who who is a member of these organizations yeah. anyway serve us does a good job but it also because it's harder to get in and because it's it's also needs to do better marketing and has a weird name yeah it's, there's not a lot of young people involved with it so that's as a as a volunteer with serve us i would really love to market it and help it get a next new generation involved 
Yeah. And while I'm doing that, I started getting involved with Trust Roots, which is another very similar uh, organization, online database of hosts. And, and as a traveler, you go and see cool people. Maybe they can you can stay with them. Maybe you just want to hang out with them, that kind of thing. Yeah. And through that, with uh, one of the founders of Trust Roots, I was in a meeting with Casper, and he discovered, uh, the founder Casper, and he discovered I was a bag designer, and he said, oh, I know a bag designer. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how we connected up, and then I talked you into coming and hanging out here, which is awesome. Yeah. And so Trust Roots for the win on that one. Oh, yeah. And right. Mikhail's been on this podcast. Some uh, listeners might yeah. have heard that episode. If He's not, the, found, one of the big, big founder, yeah. Dig back through the archives. I saw him in Berlin at like a hackathon they were doing. <laughs> Somehow I haven't gotten Casper on this podcast. I got to get Casper on here yeah, too. Yeah. But um, are you on Couchers as well? I am also on Couchers and I was even participating in some of those kind of leadership meetings for a little while. Okay. But they seem to be doing well. Um, yeah. You know, they're the youngest new version. Yeah. They're kind of the, we're couch surfing, but we're free and we'll always be free and we'll always be transparent, which is good for them. Yeah. I think it's a weird name. It kind of somehow I'm bothered by the name. Yeah. <laughs> it's too close to couch surfing to make sense. Well, I mean, their tagline is like couch surfing, but better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I had Itzy Weinstock, one of the founders on the podcast as well, earlier this year, I think in January. And he basically said as much like they're trying to take all the features from couch surfing and recreate them. Yeah. But in a ecosystem that we all can hopefully think will be free and ad free. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. The way couch surfing was supposed to be. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so yeah. I hope they do well. I hope Trust Roots does well. Yeah. Trust Roots too, like that, that name is a little, I always got to say it twice to people. Right. It's a little funky. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's yep. tough to be couch surfing. They just, it's the, the perfect name. It, was it just good. nails it. It was good. Yeah. The, um, and then the cool, one of the cool things with Trust Roots is also they have circles, they call them, which you can kind which is like interest groups. So you can kind of indicate your different interest groups. So there's, as you're aware, there's a brew, a beer brewing yeah. circle, and there's a sailing circle, or there's a you know, dumpster diving dun- circle, yeah. freegans, uh, a gardening circle. So as you as you look at someone and you see what circles you have in common, or what they're doing versus what you're doing, you get an idea of what like what they're into, what kind of person they are. And that's, yeah. That is a cool, nice feature. Yeah, and the map feature is what initially attracted me to mm. Trust Roots, which I like, but you can filter out and just see people on the map that are beer brewers yeah. into beer, which I think is cool because instead of like traveling to a place and finding a host, I might look at a host across a whole country and travel to a place because of that person. Yeah. And yeah. I'll be like, oh, they hitchhike and brew beer? Like... I'll go to that town. <laughs> like I'll go out of my way to meet this person, yep, which yep. I think is really cool. Cause a lot of people with couch surfing and the first thing a lot of people think is like, Oh, it's a free place where, where I can stay, which has caused other problems where people like treat it like a hotel. And, right. but, um, I like to go about it the other way where it's like, I want to meet the person and I'll travel to them. Right. Right. And the kind that. of person who would be like, yeah, I'm interested in meeting new people and yeah, they can come to my house. Yeah. Like, that's already a cool person. Yeah. Right? And so right away you're like, okay, that is somebody worth having a conversation with or a beer or, or you know, or staying over. Yeah. And I think what's super cool and is, you know, when you stay over at somebody's house, like, you're friends. Like, yeah. You, that's a, yeah. That's a, that's a serious kind of thing. It's cool. It's, it's a great, it's wonderful that people allow me into their house and you get to, and especially in other countries, it's a level of cultural experience that you don't get in the youth hostel thing, yeah. or certainly not in a hotel or, yeah. Huh. So I really appreciate that. And I've done that same thing with, when we traveled with Servas, my wife and I traveled in Japan and, and we, we happened to be in Southern Japan. And so because there were some Servas people up near Nagasaki, we went all the way that, you know, traveled a day or whatever to that. And the same exact way oh, you're saying, because cool. we were like, there's Servas people over there. Nagasaki wasn't on our list, but it seemed like cool people that way. Yeah, Let's go that check way. check them out. <laughs> yeah, and it worked out great. Those it, people were wonderful. It just kind of clicked in my brain, too, when you said, like, someone's spending a couple nights and they're a friend like that. And that kind of doesn't happen because if you're in San Francisco and you got buddies and you go out drinking, like, how often are they, like, coming over for a sleepover? Right, right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. that yeah. generally doesn't happen. Like, sometimes, I'm sure, you know, drink too much. Like, yeah, you can sleep on the couch. Yeah. But often, like, you just see each other during the day. So there is something about, like, 
good night and then good morning like yeah, yeah. i'm here <laughs> and, and, and see and of cult culturally like again in a foreign country foreign culture what they ate for breakfast that is a unique experience oh right? yeah right? and again the japan thing like J japanese people just eat leftovers for breakfast like yeah. they make and they make all this weird fish and seaweed stuff for dinner <laughs> and the next morning you're having that cold <laughs> okay I, that was a, that was a little bit of a struggle yeah. for me and i shouldn't speak a generalize across a whole culture but yeah i experienced that but it, so i like that but it's really interesting that you say that about like a sleepover right? like, <laughs> yeah that's how you make friends when you're a kid yeah like, that yeah and you have friendship. lifelong friendships yeah. with those people because of that yeah and, and I, even if you go out and you drink too much and you stay at your buddy's house yeah. now you got a better bond with that buddy too that's like, true that's those are your deal. better friends yeah. like that would let you do that or just yeah, yeah. And the breakfast thing too. I remember the first time I couch surfed in Dusseldorf and like I woke up and she'd already been to the bakery and just had all these different kinds of breads and jams and mustards and other stuff I wouldn't generally think to put on bread. Totally. And, I, and, and it wasn't because I was there either. Like yeah. she did that every morning. That yeah. was just like her breakfast. And I'm like, yeah. oh, cool. Wow, these people live well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you got the people was like eggs and bacon every yeah. morning. Yeah. And those, yeah, everyone's different. Do you know about the Dutch thing in the Netherlands? They have really nice bread. With yeah. really fabulous butter and then they put the chocolate sprinkles on it oh hoggle slug is the best <laughs> every time i go there it's yeah. all hoggle slug yeah. first time i saw it i'm like what is hoggle um, that's a big chocolate sprinkles no it's hoggle slug yeah, yeah. <laughs> they put it on yeah peanut butter and the hoggle slug and it's not a little peanut bit butter Ugh. i've done the peanut butter yeah. actually my favorite move is because the word for peanut butter is a good one in dutch it's like pinkle dos or something yeah someone dutch pinkle is listening yeah but i'll take a stroop waffle yeah and i'll oh. cover peanut butter on there and then put the hoggle slog oh, on there hoggle much. waffle oh <laughs> it's the best it is the ultimate dutch american fusion invention yeah. <laughs> i came and i brought my american yeah. gluttony over the topness and brought it to the dutch <laughs> american fusion <food. laughs> yep now that is a good move when i i'm so old that when i first traveled in amsterdam and i i don't know if it still happens i didn't see it the last time i was there but there were street vendors selling the fresh stroke waffles. Oh, and they're all hot they're and hot perfect. Right yeah, and they'd have like the street cart with the flat, like frying pan kind of a thing. Yeah. And they'd just make them right there and hand it to you. And it's like melty and drippy. Like, oh. So good. Yeah. Makes me want a stroop waffle. Yeah. I would always leave with like a package of them. Of course. Just be yeah. munching on those out of the backpack. The fresh ones, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a different level. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. good. Yeah. And that's the best part about eating the local food. <laughs> totally, totally. This is why you travel, I think. Like yeah. the food and the memories that the food bring. Well, that's why couch surfing, trust routes or whatever is so much better. Because if you're at a hotel, like, you know, you'll get up and maybe you'll walk to a bakery and like, yeah, you'll probably discover something. But you won't discover like what people are just eating normally. And yeah. And they yeah. can't tell you. You could ask the person at the front desk and they'll point <laughs> you to the cafe. They've pointed everyone to because they got to deal with them or whatever. And like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the the hospitality thing, and of course, big picture, Servas was founded to support world peace, hmm. and I do. Well, I don't want to go and do uh, peace work because of Servas. I, I do I do political work in other realms, but I do think just on that very simplistic, basic level, like we all need to work on getting along. We need yeah. to work on talking more, being friends, being open to ideas. And these hospitality organizations do a great job of at least helping us all improve those skills. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's, there's probably not a lot of super different political opinions in these groups. Yeah. But it's still better to build relationships than, than to stick in your little neighborhood in your own little circle. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's people who have an idea of what a country is solely based on some slanted version of the news or whatever or some event that happened. Yeah. But then if the, even if they just start hearing a story from you and you stayed with someone in Japan and now that's part of what their their version of Japan is, yeah. like a real story from you. Yeah. So it's spread. So it's not just your experience because you share that with other people and then people can shape like, oh, this goes on. Yeah. Like I remember in Iran, I still haven't been to Iran. But almost universally, people say it's the easiest place to hitchhike in <laughs> and like one of the best places and one of the most hospitable places. Because I've had plenty of people take me in hitchhiking or I yeah. meet them at a pub and then I come stay. And I guess that happens all the time there. Yeah. And I didn't really have an idea of anything about Iran. I knew it was involved in some of that George Bush 
access of evil or whatever and i that was I, I don't know i never really learned anything about it other yeah. than that and then just meeting other travelers and just hearing the stories they had about these hospitable experiences they had yeah now that's kind of what i think of when i think of Ireland. Yeah. not yeah. And still not having been there myself but yeah. learning through their little experiences yeah. there's so many good things about so many cultures it's you got to get out there and travel and do it as you have uh, better than i have uh, but um it's yeah, it, it it helps expand your mind and really gives you, gives you ideas like, yeah, that there's a lot more out there and it's a lot better that we can do at home too because of it. Yeah. So, right. Well, I think that's a pretty good note to end on. We're getting on hiking time, I think. Yeah, time to go watch the sunset. <laughs> Heck yeah, cool. Well, thanks again. Anything Absolutely, else you want man. to say? Ideamountain.com? Yeah, Ideamountain.com, <laughs> like a big pile of ideas. <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of travel gear, but the ba the journey system is designed for adventurous travelers. Yep. Yeah. All right, check it out, y'all. Till the next one. Thanks, man. Sweet. All right. Well, that was Tice, and I hope you enjoyed that. His place was uh, awesome. Really liked hanging out there. Pretty beautiful. You saw that pond we were sitting by. Uh, he's pretty proud of that, and you can kind of see why, even from that footage. It's a pretty cool little swimming hole. So yeah, if, you, if you're into his bag, uh, go to Idea Mountain and definitely use Freestyle Travel to get 15% off and save yourself, I think like, like 45 bucks or something, he said. Uh, yeah, it's an awesome bag. Um, if I wasn't into the, the hiking stuff, not the hiking stuff, but just the camping stuff that I'm in, it's a pretty ideal backpack. I like how, I love those little magnetic Fidlock things. <laughs> Playing with it was pretty cool and he's kind of thought everything through. Uh, so yeah, go check that out. Freestyle travel, that's the discount code. So yeah, let me catch you up uh, on my travels. There's a lot to catch up on, so it's almost like a whole other episode in an episode right here. Uh, so yeah, Zane Lamprey, I talked to him in Reno and then I hitchhiked to Sacramento to see my friends there. And Zane and his manager, they reached out and they're like, hey, if you want to come to another show, let me know. And they just happened to be in Sacramento the next day. So I hitchhiked to Sacramento and was able to get the, the tickets to take my friends and see a show again, which was pretty cool just to see. I haven't seen like enough stand up, I don't think, but it was cool to see like some of the jokes that they told the, the, in Reno versus some of the jokes they told in Laughlin. It was a little bit different, uh, way more people in, uh, did I say Laughlin? Sacramento. Laughlin's where I'm at now. I'll get to that but in uh, Sacramento yeah way more people uh, more energy it was uh, it was awesome so did that hung out with my friends for uh, several days in Sacramento hitting up some breweries all the good stuff um, love catching up with them so I'm glad I got to do that and then kind of got sucked up into Chico and because Chico is one of my towns too and I went up there and at first I went and hung out with this guy just kind of outside of Chico. I was going to try to make a little bit of money. And uh, I did just helping him out with uh, some stuff around the house, basically. Uh, he has a nice property outside of town. So, uh, yeah, just some like yard work and stuff and catching up. And then I was going to kind of start leaving town, but I can't leave Chico without catching up with a particular set of friends. And, uh, yeah was catching up with all of them and then ended up staying in town for another week because one of my friends suggested uh, for my hopping beer show, she's like, oh, you should go to every brewery in Chico in a day. So I'm like, all right, well, that's, that sounds like a cool video. So that'll be up uh, eventually on the hopping YouTube channel. So I did that and my buddy came along and um, held the camera and filmed everything and made it fun. And some other friends like kind of tagged along for part of it. So that made Chico like super fun. Chico's always fun. And I, I always think I'm going to go there for a couple of days and then like a week or two goes by. So it was like one of those kind of things. So I'm in Chico. I remember that uh, my friend who used to live in Bakersfield, she's up in Fortuna now, uh, working at a mortuary, living in a mortuary. And been wanting to see her up there for a little while. Uh, so yeah, finally got to do that hot day hitchhiking. <laughs> it was 108 degrees getting out of Chico and Red Bluff. Oh man. Especially in Red Bluff, it was brutal. Because I walked like five miles in Chico just to get to like the edge of the town, to get to a good place to hitchhike. That was kind of kicking my ass. And then it took like three rides or something to get to Red Bluff, which should only take one. They're very close. But yeah, in Red Bluff, I was just 
dying. And then a woman picked me up. She was going to Eureka. So dropped me off in uh, Fortuna. Catch up with my friend there. Uh, pretty cool just to be in the mortuary. Uh, I got some video and stuff. So there'll be like a hobo lifestyle episode. Uh, showing off some of that stuff uh, eventually. And yeah. was just like really enjoying catching up with her. It had been a while. And the last time I saw her she lived in Bakersfield. So Fortuna is just a lot better. <laughs> uh, yeah, I went from like 108 degrees to, I don't know, 60 over the course of a couple hours getting there. So the weather's better. There's beaches there. Uh, it's coastal California, you know, and it's a chill town. And I noticed a sign up on a streetlight saying this uh, Hops and Humboldt Beer Festival the next weekend. And she had seen that too. So she's like, yeah, you got to stay for that. And I'm like, all right, twist my arm. <laughs> so I decided in the meantime to film another hopping episode uh, again, that'll come up later. And the idea was to go to every coastal brewery north of the Golden Gate Bridge in California. So I looked up what the word coastal kind of meant. And in that uh, context, it meant like within two or three miles of the coast. So I'm like, all right, there's 10 breweries. I can do that. So I'm like, yeah, I'll hitchhike up to the north and then I'll come back down in time for this beer festival. That was my idea. And that's what I did. So. And then I actually saw there was a brewery just over the border in Oregon that's the most western brewery in the United States. So I'm like, ah, for kicks, I gotta do that. So I hitchhiked up. It took um, a couple days to get north. The first day, a guy in his uh, van just kind of traveling. He picked me up, dropped me off in uh, Crescent City, hit up a couple breweries there, uh, camped next to a graveyard, and kept going north. And... Was that Crescent City? I think it was, yeah, it was. And then I went to a little town in Oregon, met some girl who was biking down the coast. That was kind of cool, set a brewery there. Hit up that most Western brewery, started hitchhiking down. This is all over the course of like three or four days. And on the way down, hit up some more breweries that I sort of skipped on the way up in like McKinleyville and stuff. And finally got back to Fortuna. And uh, yeah, my, my bivy pack, now it's getting kind of beat up, <laughs> uh, especially something crawled over me like a, a raccoon or something. Fuck, squirrel, I don't know. I kicked my feet and kind of got a hole in the bivy. Like, uh, so yeah, that's why it's time to make a, a new one, plus all the new ideas I have. Uh, again, yeah, definitely email me if you're interested in uh, getting one for yourself, hobolifestyle at gmail.com, and uh, we'll work that out, but you got to do it soon. <laughs> if you're hearing this, maybe it's too late, but if it's still, what day is today? September 15th or something, 16th, 14th. Um, if it's before October, give it a shot, but it might be too late. Uh, Try it, though. Uh, yeah, so got down to Fortuna, went to that beer festival. That was kind of cool. There were some of the breweries that I'd already like been to and one I was going to go to called Jippo. We just had a great time at this festival. There's like 30 breweries pouring beer. Um, a lot of good beer and yeah hung out with my friend a little bit more we actually went to like a state fair or county fair or something like that uh, that was a good time just driving around checking out beaches and views and stuff uh, california's beautiful so like, yeah the whole way up the coast is just rocks popping out of the water i was meeting other people on like road trips that whole time the girl on the bike all that stuff it's it's gorgeous and i haven't been along the coast in a while so i needed a little reminder <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and then left Bakersfield, not Bakersfield, Fortuna. That's where she used to live, my friend. Uh, and I did wind up in Bakersfield eventually. But, uh, yeah, left Fortuna. And, yeah, it ties on my mind. Um, I did want to meet him in person finally, as you just saw. I did. Um, so I was kind of aiming there. But I also have uh, ex-step grandparents in uh, Santa Rosa. And I wanted to visit them. So I started making my way down. I got to San... Oh, no, I got dropped off first. Uh, oh, I'm, like, losing track of the the order of operations here. <laughs> There's so much good stuff. Yeah, Fortuna started hitchhiking down, and I think I camped on the coast again that night. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what happened. I... The last breweries to go. So I went to Jippo. Sorry, the coast is just gorgeous and sometimes it blends together. 
uh, yeah, I went to Jippo that day. I left Fortuna, which is a brewery. Like, it's the most remote brewery in California. It's like one road in, one road out, kind of to get there. And that was cool because I'd met them at the beer festival, so kind of chatted them up. When I was there, hitchhiked down, camped somewhere random at a junction, and then the next day, hugged the coast, got to Fort Bragg. There are two breweries in Fort Bragg, so I camped there one night because one didn't open until like a Thursday north coast. They make Old Rasputin, that beer maybe you've heard of. Um, one of the OG Imperial Stouts, kind of. Um, that was delicious. Drank that barrel aged and kept on going down the coast. There was another brewery. I got picked up by a couple that was like out of money and they were going, they were driving down to the casino to get gas money, which was just kind of funny. And um, Point Arena is the name of that place. And there was a brewery there called New Museum Brewers and Blenders, which is one of the best breweries on the coast, in my opinion. Met the couple who owns the place. Uh, that was really cool. And yeah, hitchhiking out of there, I was just getting these short rides and then I wound up just like on the coast, no buildings, no houses, sun was going down. I think I got a picture on Instagram of something of like a cow. That's, and then finally, yeah, the sun was going down and I found like a little patch of trees and like scrambled over to it. So I think it was technically on someone's property. And uh, yeah, camped in this beautiful patch of the trees just with the ocean in the background, Pacific Ocean like crashing against the, the rocks and everything. So. That was pretty sweet. Um, next day I was hitchhiking, aiming to get to uh, Santa Rosa. Mission accomplished. I got picked up by, um... oh, this is kind of cool. Let me take a sip of this. Um, I got eventually picked up by this British dude and his Indonesian boyfriend who've just been traveling all over the damn place. And this is funny because they picked me up a few days later. Spoiler alert. So they were just super cool and like had a lot to talk about travel wise, philosophy wise, and mostly just, yeah, travel. And they dropped me off at the board boardwalk in Santa Cruz. I might have said Santa Rosa a second ago. I'm all over the place. Oh, wait. <laughs> I am all over the place. I am jumping ahead. My bad. That's days later. <laughs> Man. A lot of coastal hitchhikings blending together. No, no, no. I got picked up by a guy who was going to um, just north of Santa Rosa at this point. That dude had also been traveling. I think he was from Texas or something. And he dropped me off just north of Santa Rosa. And I went to uh, Russian River Brewery, the big one. Uh, yeah, cool guy, cool ride. The brewery is cool. I hadn't been to the big one before. And then hitched a short ride into Santa Rosa itself. And that's when uh, grandparents picked me up. Hung out with them for a night. Caught up with them. That's always great, actually. Um, had dinner, some drinks, swapped a bunch of stories. And in the morning, they dropped me off at a winery uh, where a buddy I haven't seen in maybe like 10 years um, manages. So, caught up with him at the winery. Uh, he gave me a couple of bottles of wine when I left. Just weighing down my backpack. I'm cool with that. Uh, it was great catching up with him. He was talking about uh, doing some kind of like wine show, and he doesn't know exactly what the parameters are, but basically just like bopping around and being funny about wine, but still like he's super knowledgeable about it. So, kind of talked about maybe doing something that maybe that'll turn into something. Kind of hope so. It would be be fun um yeah and then i literally walked out of there with the two bottles of wine in my bag and everything and walked to the road um trying to go through san francisco at this point i thought i was going to catch up with a buddy in san francisco but as i got close luckily i got wi-fi right before i got to the golden gate bridge and something was going on with him and he like wasn't going to be able to hang out which i'm really glad i found out before i got there also would have I mean, it was kind of a disaster either way, because by the time I hitched a ride into San Francisco, I got dropped off in Golden Gate Park. And, uh, yeah, hitchhiking in the middle of any city is tough, and San Francisco is no different. Like, technically, like, there's highways going through, but they're not highways. It's just, like, city-level streets, so hitchhiking is, yeah, not easy. <laughs> so basically, I just had to walk, and I walked, and I walked, and I walked. I think as far as like daily city, I don't know how far that was. 
It wasn't 10 miles. Maybe it was. I don't think so. Um, a couple hours of walking or something. Finally, there's a brewery. I'm like, all right, let me just fucking sit down, have a beer, and uh, adjust what I'm doing here. Because Santa Cruz, San Jose was the next uh, destination to see Tice. Um, so I'm sitting at the brewery. They're super nice, uh, the bartenders. And then I see that there's a bus for like a dollar seventy-five that goes like down the coast a little bit, um, not far, but out of the city. And I'm like, okay, I'll take that as far as it goes. The dudes at the brewery gave me a free beer to go with. That was cool, triple IPA. Uh, hop in this dollar seventy-five bus that gets me down to I think like Pacifica or something. If anyone was keeping track <laughs> and. There was a brewery there about to close, but I popped in there, uh, had a couple beers. They wouldn't let me pay for them. They just liked my stories, <laughs> my backpack, I guess. That was pretty freaking cool. Always love getting free beer. Um, and yeah, I actually offered them the triple IPA can, but they were real like purists, like, oh, we can't drink outside beer. Like, okay. Um, and then I found a place to camp, a little hiking trail. Next day, there's like a tunnel. I hitch a ride through there, um, met a cool girl who noticed my uh, tripod and stuff, and we were talking about cameras and stuff. She was real cool to meet, and that's when I got picked up by the British guy and the Indonesian guy. Yes. <laughs> and they dropped me off in Santa Cruz at the boardwalk, and they were continuing down uh, a little bit further. Uh, so that's when I met them. And I already kind of told you about them. That was cool. And then from Santa Cruz, I kind of hung around Santa Cruz for an hour or two, just checking things out, boardwalk, one brewery. And then hitched a ride up the hill to a place called Boulder Creek. That's where I met uh, Tice. Um, you saw that interview, and that was cool. I think I was there for just a couple nights. But um, yeah, I met his family, uh, his wife and his daughter, Swam in the pond a couple times, uh, just talked a lot about travel, talked a lot about like what you just saw uh, or heard. <laughs> Those kind of conversations, pretty cool. And yeah, after that, uh, I guess my next destination was just to go south. Uh, I was thinking of going to Paso Robles and through Big Sur. So I started hitching south. I got to Monterey, went to a brewery there, Alvarado Street, uh, camped a little south of all that and then the next day woke up got a ride from a state trooper told you this is a lot of hitchhiking <laughs> now, you, now you're seeing like well, my stories are blending together uh it's a lot of coastal hitchhiking um but yeah i got picked up by a state trooper slash park ranger kind of guy super cool uh road shotgun up with him just telling stories about travel he was curious about the bivy pack and stuff too and then all of a sudden, like a Tesla, like passed us in another car in front of us. And he's like, I can't let this stand. <laughs> so we started chasing this Tesla and all, the Tesla's out of sight at this point. He's like, I'm going 95 miles an hour and we're not even like, we're losing ground, you know? So then he kicks it. We're going a hundred and something and we're whipping around like tight curves through the forest and back out to the ocean. Still not catching up with this Tesla. And finally, like, I think he's like, gone too far kind of but he lets me out and continues to chase i don't know if he got him or not <laughs> i was like kind of hoping to catch up because it was fun going that fast uh whipping around all that stuff uh but yeah he dropped me off and that's when those two guys picked me up again the british guy and the indonesian guy again like two three four days later because they're on their way to la to uh catch a flight to mexico or something so they took me to the turnoff to uh, Paso Robles. Uh, I passed through Paso Robles. I was hoping to catch up with a, a few friends there, but just didn't hear back from them kind of in time and continued on to uh, Bakersfield. Originally, I was thinking of going down to LA, uh, see my sister and a friend, but couldn't quite find a place to stay while I was down there, and I just didn't want to show up in LA with nowhere to stay. It's just such a big city. So I was like, let me hang out in Bakersfield and see if something pops up. So in Bakersfield, I hung out with another friend, actually the dad of my friend in Fortuna, and uh, her brother. Uh, that was really awesome. Ended up staying there a little longer than I thought I would, um, just a few days or something. But uh, super fun, catching up with them. Um, 
yeah, just pretty mellow actually. And yeah, at that point I decided I really wanted to start making these, uh, new, the new design for this uh, backpack that I'm doing. So I decided to hitchhike to uh, Laughlin, where I am now, because <laughs> I still get these free rooms, as you guys are very well aware of, and actually these free rooms are when it's easy to do these podcasts. <laughs> so here I am again. Um, yeah, so that was just yesterday. I uh, left Bakersfield, caught a few rides, got a ride from a trucker. He was going to Phoenix. Uh, he dropped me off, kind of the last turn off, and then a dude cutting up through off one dropped me off here. And I'm actually at the uh, Tropicana, where I've never stayed before. Got five free nights, because that was the maximum. So that should be enough time to uh, finalize the design for this uh, new pack. Uh, and I'm super excited about it. I've had notes for the past, like, year really i'm just like subtle improvements i want to make big improvements and uh so now it's time to like finalize it you know because it's one thing to have thoughts and ideas and some pictures uh it's another to get on sketchup and figure out the exact measurements of all the patterns and yeah the most efficient way to use the fabrics and blah 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 and yeah pop it all in and have an order ready for the fabric so that's what I'm going to be doing here. Just uh, chilling. I did, <coughs> pardon me. I did uh, play a little bit of blackjack yesterday, but just enough to win $8. <laughs> That's, that was my goal, win $8. Because uh, I don't really have any money left um, cash-wise. What do I got left? Um, nah, I don't have nothing, but I got like 50 bucks. So I can't like make big moves. But I wanted a burger from in and out so I won eight bucks. The burger was actually only five, so I paid for my uh, tips for drinks. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm here, so I might get sucked into doing some of that blackjack stuff, but mostly, uh, yeah, make this uh, new bivy pack design. So once again, if you're hearing this or watching this uh, and it's still September, Email hobolifestyle at gmail.com or get in touch with me any which other way you can. Facebook, Instagram, whatever's convenient for you. Uh, and yeah, just 350 bucks. We'll do it via Cash App or Venmo. And you'll get the latest and greatest. The same thing that I'll be uh, traveling with. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm incredibly excited for it. <laughs> like, and I'm going to make some other little things that I need to. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not even sure where I'm going next. I'm just here. Um, I might go to Phoenix to actually make this thing. I might go to Mississippi. Just depends. Uh, I'm just not getting ahead of myself. So yeah, who knows? In a week from now, I could be anywhere. But most likely, I don't know, actually. <laughs> So that's it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed another show. Again, um, if you're into a backpack that turns into a tent and is also a jacket, <laughs> and oh man, so excited, then message me right away. If you're not into camping but you love traveling and convenience, go to ideamountain.com and um, use that code Freestyle Travel to get 15% off because that is an awesome bag too just depends on your style of travel got you covered in the backpack <laughs> realm now uh yeah anything else anything else no i don't think so i think life is just sweet so enjoy yourselves um there's a lot of hitchhiking talk and next episode probably have more to say about this backpack and whatever the hell else happens life is good all right you guys I will see you down the road. To hell with plans I made, I need a new escape. With all my shit straight, I'll get my big brain.